1. Abandoned Mansion Frank is a popular filmmaker and YouTuber who embarks on heart-pounding adventures into the most neglected and most feared locations on Earth. He has a YouTube channel called Franco TV, where he takes his viewers through shocking and unexpected encounters both in abandoned houses and in the woods. On the 13th of August 2024, he set out to thrill his fans with another experience. However, the real thrill could be waiting for him in the dark, and it may not be a very nice one. Thank you for watching Franco TV. So I've just made it into yet again another dangerous part of town but this is how I like it I am so happy to be back in the in the zone right now but I have to be very very careful because there's a lot of thieves and a lot of chotos and bandits all over this place but I've made it into the abandoned mansion area and as you can see it's pretty empty and secluded I hope nobody's living through here which I don't think there is but I have a new location that I haven't taken you guys to and it's like a castle like house or something of the sorts and I think it's right through here. From the moment Frank stepped into the building, it's obvious that the mansion was recently abandoned. It has no electrical power supply and is filled with a lot of doors and windows. These doors had handprints and blood traces on them, which implies that a number of people might have recently visited and probably had a bizarre experience. I'm getting nervous, so I'm trying to get a little bit hot. This place has a lot of weird things going on with it. You can tell a lot of people have been here with the handprints. Looks like little kid hands. See it? Is that blood? red stuff on the window. As he kept scanning through the house, he found a room with three doors where he witnessed the unthinkable. Apart from the door which serves as a passage to the room, the other two wooden doors are seen to be barred with iron. There's doors everywhere. This is a room I wanted to check out originally. Oh, what the hell? <gasps> Wait. I'm not seeing this right. Why are these things like barred in there? It looks like, like, like a dungeon or something. Surprisingly, one of the barred doors is locked while the other is open with easy access. Behind the open door were stains on the wall which looked like handprints filled with blood. This same room has a strong and unpleasant smell. Additionally, there's a small container whose content defies explanation. And there's red stains on the door. And there's more suspicious red stains on the wall. What the hell is that? What scares me with this is that this definitely looks like real blood. And this too. It looks like somebody was like putting their bloody hand around the wall like they were waiting in here for a while. Interesting is this. What the hell is this? If you guys have any idea what this is, let me know. But this is disgusting. It even stinks in this room. Things get more interesting as it appears that there are many more doors and objects to explore from this hidden room. Frank found an active toy on the floor, which may indicate the presence of a little child in the house. 
Right after this, he found a shocking inscription on the wall written in Spanish as Ayuda me queren matar, and the translation in English means Help me, they are going to kill me. Now more things begin to unfold as he picks up the toy and places it in a different location around the room. Turning off his flashlight and going into a complete night vision, Frank saw the most creepy silhouette around the toy staring at him for a while before moving away in milliseconds. His mind struggled to comprehend the nature of this entity. He had no idea if it was a spirit, a demon, or something far more sinister. The toy, which looks like a mere plaything, soon becomes a catalyst for a terrifying encounter. This mystery has Frank in its grip, and he is willing to risk everything to uncover its darkest secrets. Hola? I swear to God, I just seen something standing right here. Hold on, I'm gonna turn on my... Come on, turn on. And recording now. I now have my GoPro night vision recording. What the hell did I just see? I don't know if it was a reflection from outside or what, but there is no reflection. There's no light. I don't know what the hell just happened, but I was waiting for the toy to turn off, and as soon as they turned off the light, I seen something right over here. It looked like a, it almost looked like a reflection peeking in from the light, but then it moved. While trying to understand the scenario, he decided to go out to get some fresh air, and also get a brighter light and camera to help him detect what the silhouette really was. Looking at the room from outside, things get more scary as there are objects hovering around the room something that looks like a human head or a paper flying across. Take a look. I'm looking at a window from the outside here. And if I look right over there, I literally just saw a head peeking out. Right from that window. Somebody was just staring at me. Is it moving? There's something there. And there's like a little light in the back room. There's not supposed to be anybody here, but there's a light there. Make sure I'm not being stared at from any of the other windows. Look at that. What the hell is that? I don't know what I'm looking at here, but I'm going to keep moving as normal. There's something in that back room, but I'm not going into this. As he moves back into the house, every new step seems to reveal a new terror. This time, he saw something that completely freaked him out. Watch this. Oh, 
I just saw an arm really low to the ground just push the door open. What the fuck? Hola? He moves closer to the door to find what it is, but his effort was futile. So he decides to close the door to check if the hand that previously closed the door will open it again. But the door was sticky in this time. He confirmed that the wall stain's earlier scene is that hand filled with blood. He finds a way to lure this creature, but all his effort proved abortive. I want to see if the door opens again. Hola. ¿Quieres abrir la puerta? Do you want to open the door? As he continues his adventure, he finds his way out of the mansion to the backyard, unknown to him that there is something more sinister to come. Moving forward, his camera caught the glimpse of a little girl spying on him through the window. Right there, he was convinced that this creature is human and is a little kid running around the house who is probably trying not to come in contact with him. Right here is the big window. What the hell is that? Unfortunately, Frank couldn't go further with his adventure as he got a reminder from the security that he had exhausted his time. He also confirmed that the speculations of the child being in the house are somewhat true because other locals as well as the security guard himself had seen or heard of the creature. All right, so I kind of have some bad news. I'm on a time constraint with this location. I just spoke with the security guy. I wanted to be able to go into this room to kind of explore it, but the problem is that I had exhausted all my time in the other location because of the things that I was getting. And I did talk to the security about the child that I was seeing, and he was like, no, there is reports of kids. I've seen it too. Like the guy has seen the child inside the mansion. That's not the first time. Um, I've seen it. I've seen a kid inside this area. I don't know if you guys remember this area with the tunnel. There are different assumptions and theories from views and subscribers that the child is a spirit or a demon child. This is based on the fast movements, traces of blood, and disappearance of the child throughout the whole adventure. All these theories and assumptions cannot be discarded based on these evidences, but this child and mansion still remains an unsolved mystery as time couldn't allow Franco TV to go further with the adventure. While this encounter was spine tingling, it's nothing compared to the haunted Belmont Hotel in South Carolina. So get your mind ready, because the next adventure is not for the faint-hearted. 2. Haunted Belmont Hotel, South Carolina Moe Sargi is a Lebanese YouTuber with a great passion for capturing paranormal activities. He travels far and wide to visit rumored bizarre places and to uncover mind-blowing mysteries. His encounters revolve around documenting footage of his encounters coupled with detailed explanation on how these events unfold. On 1st of February 2024, he uploaded a vlog about an unusual occurrence at a certain hotel in South Carolina. This vlog dropped like a bombshell, sending shockwaves through the online community. In the window. What's up guys, I'm Osarji. Welcome back to another paranormal investigation all the way out here from the wonderful Abbeville, South Carolina. Now today I've got my good friend, Lee Triana Brown, and her husband, Matt. And today, these two lovely people are gonna be helping me on this investigation of the Belmont Hotel. It's super haunted. This place has graciously given us the most haunted bedroom in the hotel for free to spend the night in and document the paranormal, which is what we're going to be doing. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Lee Triana, she is on my TV show. We work together on Repossessed, which you guys can watch on Hulu, and she's a very talented psychic medium. I've had her in videos in the past. So, smash the like button. I'm gonna leave their information in the links below if you guys wanna check 
check them out, whatever their socials are. You guys can go follow them. Now, what we're gonna do today is investigate this hotel and sleep the night. So I'm gonna be documenting even sleeping in this haunted ass hotel. I can't wait to do this. Smash The myth about the Belmont Hotel is that paranormal activities have become a hub of unexplained occurrence where the bizarre and inexplicable have become an everyday life. For its residents and staff, these eerie events are no longer shocking to them. Rather, it has become a reality. Jim, the owner of Belmont Hotel, was invited to talk about how he feels about his hotel and how a few past events have happened prior to this vlog. Well, we have a wide variety of paranormal things that happen to us here. And it happens so often that it's no big deal anymore. It's just like a regular thing. You're just used to it now. Yeah, uh, some folks like y'all came in early on uh, and they shared with us how the spirits here were all positive and that they had, just they being the spirits, yeah. had expressed to the investigators how much they liked my wife and I because we accepted them. Yeah. And uh, we really, one night I woke up and I just happened to look at my watch, and it was 3 a.m. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, 3 a.m., right? Yeah. And I looked to this way, and on the wall was a spot about this wide, felt like that. And it was glowing bright as the sun. Oh, wow. I mean, bright as the sun, it, um, like an orb. Maybe it was beautiful, bright, lit up the whole room. So, because I had experienced so many things before here, it really didn't bother me. I just went right back to sleep. <laughs> You're like, yeah, there's an yeah. orb in my room, but I'm just gonna yeah. go back to bed. Yeah. So I woke up the next morning and I rolled off the bed and put my feet down to put in my bedroom slippers. And my bedroom slippers were soaking wet. Oh, wow. Like they'd been dipped in a bucket of water. And there was no water, no, no drops of water or anywhere around on the floor. And just right there in my slippers. That is interesting. That is, I've never heard of anything like that. And it was I've crazy. Done so many paranormal investigations. Yes. It, it. He went ahead to give an insight to what should be expected in this video. He also talks about how strange individuals dressed in an irregular comes to the hotel, seeking a spirit called Lydia, and how the spirit manifested itself. What should I expect tonight? You just really never know here. We really never know. Oftentimes when we're really busy. Part of what I do is work all three floors. We may be having a wedding going on on the first floor, something happening on the veranda, the downstairs area may be really busy. And my wife um, is the consummate hospitalitarian and she's always talking to people. And so I'm coming down these stairs one night when we were really, really busy and it was a paranormal convention, it was here as a matter of fact, and they were having a costume ball. So I got to, to about this stair here and my wife was standing here in the lobby and she was talking to a guy who was dressed up like Dracula and three women who were dressed up like Southern Bells. So and the cool thing about it was the guy wouldn't talk. The guy would communicate through the Southern Bells. And my wife was telling the story and said, oh, hey, this is Jim, uh, he's my husband. You know, he's working tonight, uh, da, 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 da. So we talked a little bit, you know, I said, hello. And then so the guy, went like this to talk to one of the girls. And the girl said, have you guys ever heard of a spirit here named Lydia? And my wife looked at me and said, Jim, you ever heard about Lydia? I said, no, I never heard of Lydia. And um, they stood there for a few seconds. I said, you know, guys, it's really nice to meet you, but I have to go. I turned to walk back up the stairs. And when I did, something hit me on the back of the leg. And you could hear it, I could feel it. Whoa. And I looked over here at my wife, the three women looked at her, and the guy that was dressed up like Dracula did this, and the little girl looked at him. At about 10 p.m., Mo starts his investigation with a backstory on what might have been the reason behind the haunted environment. An African-American man was unjustly imprisoned and stabbed to death. It was reported that this man was stabbed over 300 times and hung in the streets after leaving the jail for allegedly arguing with an older white man. Amongst other things, the spirit of the Black Widow was rumored to roam the hotel often and usually stayed at room 16, which is also reported to be the most haunted room. So Mo decides to lodge in that exact room in order to have a closer encounter with the supposed spirit. 
Let's watch how this unfolds. All right, guys, here it is, room 16. Supposed to be the most haunted room inside of this hotel. Yes, sir, yes, sir. This uh, should haunted be exciting. Room. We've actually already been in here. Yeah. And uh, took a little nap earlier because I definitely needed it. I didn't really have anything paranormal happen while I was taking a nap, but I was very, very tired while I was doing this. So hopefully we get some type of paranormal out here later tonight because we will have our cameras rolling too. But right now what we're going to be doing is going through the hotel, trying to see if we As Mo settles in to address his viewers, the spirit starts manifesting. In a moment, the first occurrence of the night had happened. See this. After anything paranormal, it is still a little bit early. Like, yes, it's like 10 o'clock, but there are still people awake. There's, I think, like eight people that are occupying rooms inside of the hotel. Did that just turn off by itself? Yeah, I didn't touch it. Wait, actually? Yeah. I missed that, I wasn't filming. Yeah, that just literally turned on by itself. I didn't, I didn't touch it, I was sleeping. No, no, I know, you're standing right there. I'm watching you. To make it worse, Mo decides to take a little tour around the hotel. He summons Lydia to meet him halfway, but to his greatest surprise, she responds in the most subtle but creepy way. Could this spirit be real? Does Lydia exist? Or is it someone just messing around with Mo in the hotel? Watch this to find out. Nope. Oh, so, not right now. But they said it happened at 3 o'clock in the morning. All right. So, like, you want to stop, like, halfway. Halfway? See if she beats you. Hey, Lydia, come meet me halfway. Can you meet me halfway? Right. All right, I'm here, halfway. Well, you have to sing. No, you don't have to sing. Just look, look at the... Uh, what is that? Look at that reflection in the mirror. Wait, what is that? Uh, somebody just come in? I don't see anyone. Dude, we heard a door open. Yeah, look, there's one. I didn't see anyone. Wait, it sounds like somebody came in. It sounds just like somebody came in. That's yeah. Also, that watch is... Is that watch... Is there a wind here? That Yo, watch? family. It literally sounded like somebody just came in. Yeah. 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 What the heck? Later that night, Mo decided to go out with his partner to see some other parts of the hotel and the town itself at large. While he shares some other paranormal stories with his viewers, he catches something staring at them from one of the hotel rooms. Watching when you were sleeping. Like, I was trying to sleep earlier. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it just, I kept having these dreams, like these bad dreams. <gasps> I felt like something was watching hey, me. Hey. What? No, no, no. No, there's something, something there. Like, Where? actually, something was just there. Where? In the window. That's, For real? that's our in bedroom. You caught something in the window? I swear to God I caught something in the bedroom. Oh God, I wasn't feeling it. From this encounter, it's beginning to show that the stories about the hotel are seemingly true. As the investigation continues, Mo and his team decided to go to the basement, where a carriage attendant was reportedly murdered. And in the middle of their conversation, they heard a beeping sound in different spots in the basement. And, um, the so he, he would take care of the carriages? Yeah, he was like like a parking attendant mm. for the carriages. Okay. And then um, they, they captured him and drug him outside. and. Uh, what was he, that? Yo, what the hell was that? What was that? That came from behind Lee, not what over there. The... This way? Yeah. That came from back here. I, I thought I heard it down here, right? Yeah, it was on this side. What the hell? There it goes again. What is that? Stay quiet, everybody. What would it be? Is that that too, right? Yeah, we all heard it. I know that this is a storage room and everything, but the history here. Yeah, that was strange. Sorry, guys. Yeah. What? Yo, so far, some weird things have happened. Here. Dude, we caught a shadow. A shadow figure walk across the yeah, room. Yeah, look at it. Yeah, you were some type of apparition. Insane. 
And now this weird stuff. As if that wasn't enough, the crew began to feel the presence of an unseen creature in the basement. The weird sounds they've been hearing did not only testify to this effect. In fact, the presence of some invincible movements coming in contact with them is also proof. Could this be a sign for Mo and his crew to leave? Well, one of the crew members felt a touch on her back and something unexpected followed. Watch this. Yeah, that kind of sounds kind of nice. Haley, do you see anything here, like using your psychic abilities? I feel something here, and I feel like, look, I'm just getting covered in goosebumps. Yeah, I can see that. Holy wow. I'll tell you something, I feel like my back hurts. I bet you do. I don't see anything right now. It feels like he's hiding from us. Matt, what do you think? What do you think? Oh, why are you Oh! He was right here! What was that? What do you mean? What happened? Something just touched me on the back, right Seriously. here. Seriously? Seriously? You just got scratched too. It didn't she hurt touched me, her. but I, it it's cold! Feel it! Right here. Oh yeah, look at that. Feel her shirt. It's actually cold on her shirt. Why is it so what cold? What the hell? Like ice. Yo. Yo. Within a few seconds, she felt another touch on her body again. Now, this is getting very terrifying. Within a blink of an eye, she sees a figure standing around with a bright colored eyes and a dark complexion. Just like in movies, it seemed like the spirit was trying to communicate to the crew through an available channel which was unclear. This didn't stop the crew members from having goosebumps all over their bodies. And I'm holding two things. I'm holding a camera on one hand and a light in the other hand. It's all right. Please don't be afraid. I just saw a man standing right here. Watch your step. You saw a man. What is he it? standing right here. Do you get a, get a look at what he looked like? He has, honestly, he has eyes like all the, he's got light colored eyes, but he had a lot darker complexion than the three of us. Hello. Hey, who's here? What, what is your name? Early? That's it. That's not right. What's the guy's name that was in here? I don't know. I've never gotten to. That was a growl. Hey, can you tell us what your name is? Is there the guy that was killed in here? What's his name? Earlier that day, Mo and his crew members visited a graveyard and they assumed that a ghost followed them from there down to the hotel and was now trapped in the basement. Surprisingly, the ghost which communicated through the phone referred to himself as Jacob. From that angle. Hey, did something follow us from that graveyard? Oh, can you see him? Yeah, what the hell? I feel like I'm doing So, a on the vlog channel today, I actually went to the graveyard and we did a video there. You guys can watch it on the, on the actual vlog channel. We definitely probably did bring something back from the graveyard. Yeah. I, maybe the, he's trying to protect us from it. Yeah. I'm hey. thinking that's what's going on. Hey, what's with us here right now? Everything here has been a protector. I love you. Oh. Did you come from the graveyard? Do you want me to call? You want me to call Minnie and ask her to look? Who? My spirit guide. Go for it. Minnie, I need your help. I need you to tell me what you see. Look, I got goosebumps all over me again. <clears throat> Something keeps touching me. I feel my back. I got my hair down. Okay, I shouldn't huh? be cold. I'm serious. Across my back is cold. Spots. Hey, Minnie, you want to help us out? See? Yeah. It's so weird. Minnie, I need you. Aggressive, uh, yeah. aggressive, aggressive. aggressive. Oh, is that aggressive? Yes, that? something worth being it. aggressive. Can you take it out of here? It followed us back because I don't think we were dealing with a ghost there. I think we were dealing with an interdimensional creature. Because I got scratched. And that's not like it in here. Are we in any danger? I hear you. Jacob, who's Jacob? That was his name, I bet. Jacob, is that you? Are you the one that they... They kept following different sounds in the basement until they heard a loud and clear bell sound. And as they continued to communicate with the ghost through the unclear transmission, a female voice started interfering. Jacob, what's your, what's your love's name? What's, what? Jacob, was that you? Just slow down because I heard it. I heard it. Woman, what's your name? Susanna. Her that's, name's Susanna. That's the second time we've heard Susanna, by the way. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, so she had to be Susanna and he was Jacob. 
This proves that they aren't surrounded by just one entity, but two. They get to a darker part of the basement to confirm which of the ghosts was in there with them. And in a subtle but terrifying way, the ghost replies to them with the blink of a light and with an ice-cold feeling on their skin. They probably thought they had seen enough unknown to them that more surprises awaited them. Yeah, I don't see any bells over here. Yeah. Hey, Su Susanna, Jacob, or whoever is here, I'm gonna turn off my light. There they go. Oh my God, yeah, that's crazy. We got crazy. what we asked for, right? Is there anything in the bar? If there's anything haunted or in the bar, can, can you light up the REM pod at least? Can you talk to us, please? Should we go and investigate oh. the bar? Oh, oh my God, yeah. Should we go and investigate the bar? Is there anything paranormal in the bar? Rem the REM pod and the K2 meter are going off right now. K2 meter just spiked up. Okay. What's in the bar? Should we go to the bar? If you, if you make everything go off at the same time, Amen. our audience will get huh. 100k likes for us. Hold still. I got something behind you on the thermal. What do you mean you got something behind oh. you? Oh. That's temperature change on the REM pod as you're using the thermal. Oh. Oh. Taking a picture of it. It was coming around your shoulder. Yeah, I that... see it. What is that? There's something directly in front of you right now. Should I turn on a light? If you truly are with us, touch the other device. Touch the red, the red one that you're seeing that's on right now. Make it go to green or blue. This one will not hurt you. It's red, but it's not fire. It's not a candle. It's just a red light. And we'll be able to see you if you'll touch it. it ah, what the hell? I heard so, I heard something touch you. What was that? Are you okay? Yeah, oh, I didn't did hurt touch? me. I got touched right here. See if you can get something. Was that you? Did you touch me? Well, you did say you're a sacrificial lamb, so we yeah. kind of asked for it. Yeah, actually. Well, yeah. yeah, true. I just wasn't expecting it. It felt like a butterfly Yo, on my, or moth, you know? Yeah. What happened? Spot on yeah. But I just heard something behind her. I'm excited to talk uh -oh. to you. Listen, I'm excited to talk to you. Yes. Are you human? Light up the teddy bear if you are. The teddy bear makes lights and sound. Ooh. Oh my God. It's lighting up, it's lighting up. It's here. That's, that's temperature change, by the way. Whenever the REM pod does that, that red is just something's changing the temperature around it. You mean this here? Yeah. Are you the creature from the cemetery? I really would like to know. Did you follow me because I was helping clean it? Oh, shoot. Mo, what the hell look. was that? Are you the what, creature what from the, the cemetery? No, what the hell was that? Something just came. What? Did you guys see that? I heard it. I heard what it too. What was that too. sound? That was that marble. That Where marble. marble Who threw a marble? Guys, someone just threw a marble. It hit me right in the leg. What there the, it is. That's it right there. Little things are just. Where the hell did that marble come from? It hit me right in the leg. You follow me because I was helping clean it. Oh shoot! You follow me because I was helping clean it. After leaving the basement, Mo and the crew left for the lobby with their transmitter to confirm if there were more ghosts in the hotel. As soon as they got there, they summoned Lydia. The ghost initially confirmed to be roaming the hotel. This time, the transmitter sounded differently and the chandelier in the lobby began to move. That, oh my god, that, there's something in proximity of it. You need to stop now. It's Lydia. It's, I, I'm sure it's her. Lydia, can you stop that? Lydia, honey, is that Guys, you? Guys, this thing is going off like crazy. I don't even know why. So the green is proximity. There's something close to it. Really? Well, is it me? Let me back No, you're too far. Yo, you yo, have yo, to be... Yo, yo. What? Why is that moving? Oh, the chandelier. Oh, oh, oh. How's that moving? The chandelier is moving. <laughs> Wait, actually? What the hell? There's no way. The chandelier is swinging. How's it swinging? Yo, it's swinging. Bro, that thing is so high. Yeah. I can't even touch it. No, you can't. With all that happened in Belmont, it is certain that the hotel and its environment is haunted. But don't think Belmont Hotel is haunted because the true horror awaits in the underground abandoned city. Trust me, nothing will prepare you for what is set to happen in the next video. Three. The Underground Abandoned City James the Fam, as described by his YouTube profile, is an explorer who fearlessly uncovers the secrets of the unknown and the darkest corners of the world, from spine-chilling abandoned structures to the most haunted locations on Earth. And one thing about James is how he ensures that his viewers have a good time in the course of his exploration. In 2020, James and his friend, Lou Rock, 
traveled to Massachusetts to visit an abandoned city underground. This location was known to be a tire factory for about over 40 to 50 years and is filled with a lot of toxic waste which in turn has an accumulation of poisonous gas everywhere. No one is allowed to go in there without a respirator unless the individual does not wish to come out alive. And welcome back to another haunted adventure. Guys, I made it up here to Massachusetts to hang out with my boy Lou Rock, Mama Rock, and Lucid. It's gonna be some crazy bangers. Matter of fact, we're going to film a video tonight. I'm super excited about it. Three weeks from now, I'm headed to Arizona to meet up with my boy Omar Gosh TV. So much crazy new stuff coming your way. Now, before we get into this adventure, this was an absolutely crazy, crazy place. We went there four years ago. That's right, four whole years ago. There's something insane that actually occurred there that I didn't even know. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was attached to a police station. And we probably did see some no trespassing signs and we kind of probably just went around them. Little did we know the dangers we were getting. James and his partner set out for the adventure and within a few minutes into the building, they heard a terrifying humming noise. They follow the sound and get to know that the underground is quite bigger than what they expected. Guys, because this is going to be one crazy adventure. We're inside the basement, and this is only the first level that goes down Whoa. into these caverns. We're not even in the tunnels yet. This is just a lower level. Really? we got to go like two more. Bro, this down. looks so freaky, dude. 20 minutes into the adventure, their fear came to life as they both got lost in the tunnel. Watch as their mission quickly changes from exploring the tunnel to finding their way out. Oh yeah. Dude, this is crazy, dude. I can't get over this. All right, fam, we've been walking for, uh, I don't know, another 20 minutes or so, guys. We are completely lost in here. We're trying to find any way out. Doesn't matter, even if it's the original way out, guys. Um, but this place is really giving me the creeps, guys. Um, we're gonna go this way. It looks like a pretty big opening here. So let's see what, at least that's like concrete up there, right? In the process of finding their way out, they come across things like LED lights, abandoned shoes and old doors. Fortunately for them, they find a spiral staircase which leads them back to the tunnel entrance. But does this end this adventure? No. In fact, the adventure has just started. Yeah. All right, let's go, bro. All right, Ralph, we've come back. Is there anything you want to say to us, Ralph? Is there any way you want us to go, Ralph? Are you there, Ralph? The journey continues, but this time with a focused mind and a back story of the tunnel. A man named Raphael was murdered in the tunnel during a bank robbery. And it is believed that Raphael's ghost never rested, as his spirit has been taunting the tunnel ever since. Oh, this is freaking out. What the hell? Why is the I don't know. What the fuck is that? What, what, what? What? I just heard somebody. Hello? Dude, I'm freaked out right now. I'm totally freaked out. Bro, what is this? I'm going to find where she's going now. I'm going to find where to do this. Dude, I'm scared. I do, I, I do feel like somebody's watching us right now. Like, guys, I'm back to being completely freaked out at this place. After a long time exploring the whole building, James and his friend try to find a place to lay their heads. Since they did not see Raphael or hear anything strange, the thrill of exploration begins to wear off and the atmosphere begins to feel dull. Suddenly, the atmosphere of the building changed, and they knew they were not alone. Their adventure was no longer boring now. In fact, it was just the beginning. Bro, what is that? Dude, dude, what was that? Is that that thing that just moved right there? It really is, bro. This is some scary stuff, bro. Dude, what is this? 
Bro, what do you, what do you guys think of this? That it looks old, bro. Like really old. Wow, look at those doors, guys. These must be like, are these? Bro, what is this? Bro, this is someone's storage or something. Is this like all wood in here? Bro, what is this we're in right now, guys? What the hell? Oh, I'm trying to be careful because, oh, what is that I'm stepping on? Dude, what's over this way? Whoa! Bro, I found stairs over here. What the hell? Like a spiral staircase. Hold on. Maybe we can get out that way. What's over that way, though? Uh, there's a ladder that goes to nothing. There's a ladder that goes to nothing over there. Yeah. Dude, this is crazy. Maybe we can get out that way. I'm gonna, we're going to try it, but I don't know if that staircase is uh, safe or not. Okay. Let me see. Bro, this is nuts. Huh. Hundred thousand likes for that? To nowhere. <laughs> yeah guys, I don't know about that. Okay, this is crazy guys. We're gonna go check out Don't think that this underground building is the most haunted in this video. In fact, I'm just getting started, and things are about to get more creepy because the next asylum has a lot in store for us. Four, the abandoned asylum in Alabama. The proper people are a group of guys known for uncovering the mysteries and secrets behind houses located in the most uncut locations. They are two friends, Brian and Michael, who travel in search of abandoned buildings to explore and photograph. They film their adventures solely to entertain their YouTube audience. Brian and Michael have been doing this for years and they have a proven track of providing real-life experiences and not some sort of staged content. In 2014, the proper people set out to explore a house in Alabama and to uncover the mysteries behind the house. On their way to the location, they found it amusing that there were other abandoned houses around that location and that even the road looked like no one had passed through it in decades. This is barely a road anymore. This is just a path. It's like half overgrown. Look at a little house. That's fucking creepy. Dip in the road. Yeah. Something. Hello. It's just thing. It's marking. <laughs> oh look, building. Hello. Dude, that cone sticking up, it was marking a huge hole that went straight down to like a tunnel. Really? Like like look, a manhole? This, this is a tower. Holy and shit. Smokestack. This is fucking terrifying at night. For real. This is gonna be terrifying. It's a windy night, too. A windy, cold night. On their arrival, as expected, there were a lot of empty rooms, but this time with a lot of graffiti designs. Car is locked. In we go. Into hell. Um, where do you want to go first? Is, the, is that a basement staircase? Yeah. I mean, the entire freaking wall is missing to go down into it. But hell, why not start with the basement? You want to leave? Not really. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. It'll probably be warmer down here. Oh, yeah. About 10 minutes into their adventure, they got scared to death seeing someone else in that building and knowing fully well that the building and its vicinity was totally abandoned and there shouldn't be anyone around. There's not gonna be anybody here. <laughs> Whoa, look at this. 
Look at this staircase out here. Oh shit. What? There's somebody there. No way. Yes, yes, see that light. They're out there. I swear on my life. Right there. Should I say hello? Yeah. There's somebody out there. Things begin to get more scary when they leave the building in search of the unknown person they saw, hoping to see the person and even have a conversation with him or her. But on getting outside the building, they could only feel the human's presence. It's as if the unknown person is taunting them, leading them on a wild goose chase. As much as they try to initiate a conversation with the person, their words seem to fall on deaf ears. This completely freaked them out, and they had to leave the asylum with a... Yeah, let's go to the car. It looks like a cell phone, right? Like a cell phone light, yeah. Should we just bail? I don't know. Let's see who it is. There's no other car here. He was around this side. That was 100% That a person. was a person. But he had a phone. Why is there a person here? Like, what the fuck? We can't keep exploring this place if there's like some random person out there that we don't know what they're doing. Do you want to get in the car and drive around? I don't think we should. If anything, I'm going to turn the headlights back on. I saw his light. Just now? No, I'm saying before. So you were not going crazy. I don't know. I feel like if he was a dude looking for us, he would have found, he would have just came and talked to us by now. Which, you know, I don't feel good about going back into this building if there's some person that we have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, I don't like the feeling of this. Yeah. Just get out of here. Probably. Where? You saw a light? Hello? Hello? Let's go. Yeah, the, the fact that they're not answering back. Let's get out of here. It's too sketchy. Like, yeah. they could be wanting to, like, fucking rob us. Yeah. yeah. Like, who the fuck could be out here? Alone, with, with no like, no... Fucking car. It's no doubt that this eerie encounter raises a lot of questions. Is it a lone wanderer? Or perhaps someone seeking solace in a desolate place? Keep watching to get answers to these questions. Return visit. In December 2016, Brian and Michael revisited the asylum with the aim of getting enough evidence that will change their beliefs about the non-existence of ghosts and other paranormal creatures. As they entered the house, they figured out that they weren't alone. Apparently, there was another group of people who seemed to have interest in the same building. There's a car coming. Really? Yeah, turn the light off. Light off, light off. Is they turn their headlights off. Is it a cop? I don't know. Definitely see us. Yeah, they can probably see us. Well, we should probably go down and talk to them. It's not a cop. No. Let's go talk to them, I guess. We have to. We can't just like keep going with them right next to my car. Hey! Hey! What's up? Y'all can't see me Uh not yet! <laughs> Just two of us? Okay. Oh, 
Is this? Yeah, she said he asked how many are we? Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. How you guys doing? You guys see anything interesting? No, we just got here. What all of you explored? Uh, I just walked up the stairs. It's a pretty little Yeah, I've never really made it to the top of the I've been to the you guys know the basement here? No. We were here like two years ago. Went up, just walked in, went up to the second floor right here, looked out the window, and there was like a light moving around in the woods. So we're like, hello, who's there? No answer. So we just left because we were like sketched by that. Okay, well, I feel now we're back here. That you guys like yes. a camera crew because I feel like <laughs> we was almost getting set up. I was like, hello? Yeah. Yeah, he had a camera, so it's good. Should we go to a different building? Yeah. Okay. And what attracts investigators to this same building? Well, it was formerly the old Bryce Hospital, which was segregated and specially made for African Americans until the 70s when desegregation laws were put in place and people of different colors and race had to stop using the facilities and amenities. Brian and Michael proceeded to check out another building around which was another hospital linked with the old Bryce Hospital. According to reports, there are ghosts and an unseen intercom legend that mess with people when they visit the building. In the course of their adventure, they observe that the building has been neglected for a long time and that the passage of time has not been kind to this hospital. The walls look really cracked and the windows so shattered. This building has a lot of reflections. The exterior walls are collapsed. Yeah, but this drop ceiling is intact for some reason. This is probably glass here that's just got smashed out. Or it was just gutted super hard by scrappers. There's still tile in No, this was glass here. You can see the frame. Oh yeah, there's the minty hospital tiling in here. This is probably where the surgical operating room was. Floor to ceiling, green tiles. While touring the building, they decided to do a temperature check of the building, which initially read between 58 and 60 degrees. To their surprise, within a few minutes, the room temperature has significantly dropped. That background noise is always there. This room just might not be very spooky. It's 55 degrees now. No, you're kidding. Get it on camera. 57. It's a bit colder. It's gotta just, there we go. It's a bit colder. Let's check this wall. Also hearing noises, probably animals. 56.5. That wall too? The whole room. That's a little strange. This is like only 54? 10. 54? Okay, what happened? To that was only like 10 minutes ago that we were checking the temperature. Can you think us being in this room would make it warmer? 54, what the heck? Hang on, I got What was like, the ceiling, 57, 58, nine? You were getting like 60s before. That bat's moving around in there. It's getting colder. No way. 54, it's fluctuating so much. It's blowing it out that you can't even read it. Don't turn the light off all the way, just make it really dim. That's what I was doing. Oh! That's a person. Right? I don't know. Hello? What the fuck? Yeah. Hello? Sound like a door. Don't turn the light off all the way, just make it really dim. That's what I was doing. 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 52 out there. It was 60 out there before, was it? It's going down, 52 here. That was a voice, was it not? 
they went back to Bryce Hospital to confirm the legend of the topmost floor of the building, where a boy was reportedly drowned by a nurse due to a physical tussle between them while trying to administer his medication. The legends say that the boy's ghost still remains at the topmost floor of Bryce Hospital and tries to haunt whoever comes into that floor. To this effect, they tried to communicate with the ghost through a radio to figure out how true these legends are. It's AM or FM? Are you real? Are the legends true? Can you prove that you're real? Ghost boy. What did that nurse do to you? Oh, <laughs> dude, come on. Do you not like your icy hydrotherapy baths? What is your name? How do we confirm that stories about the legends are true? Is it possible that the ghost has moved out of the building? These questions remain a mystery. Just when you thought the asylum in Alabama is the hallmark of this video, it's just a mere appetizer for the feast of fear that awaits within the abandoned mind. So, take a deep breath and join me on this journey. Five, the abandoned Horton Mine located in Nevada. Exploring abandoned mines and other unusual places is a YouTube channel that dives into abandoned gold mines in the most unexpected places. This channel does not only have a large fan base, but also the most viewed and most subscribed to channel on YouTube for abandoned mine exploration. From exploring abandoned mines, to hiking, to remote locations, to investigate unusual places, this channel stands out among many others. In the summer of 2013, the explorer finds a mine in Nevada with the quest to take his viewers on a jaw-dropping discovery. The Horton Mine, as it is called, needs little or no introduction when it's being mentioned to people around the vicinity. From the entrance of the Horton Mine, water could be seen flowing around from the outside, with some footprints on the floor. As soon as the explorer entered, he had a sense of unease, but that didn't stop him from continuing his discovery. I forget what, I forget what this was called, this particular mine entrance here, but uh, this one's got a little bit of water in it coming out of it. Not much. Okay, we can go in here and just take a quick look. I don't think I'm going to explore this particular mine. There's a little bit too much water in, in here, and uh, I know this mine is really old, but uh, yeah, water in a mine. I do see other footprints here in the uh, mud, but uh, I just don't think it's wise to go in here when there's water. Within a few minutes and a few distances from the entrance of the tunnel, the hanging chains start to move on their own. Following this, the ambient temperature of the cave suddenly dropped and there was a negative presence felt, more like there was something moving around to mark a territory. In order not to experience something totally unexpected, the explorer decides to leave the cave and head out. Let me uh, turn my light on. Okay, here's a shot looking down the uh, attic from just inside the portal. And uh, some water here and there. So I'll go up here just a little bit further and see. A year later, at the prompting of many who saw the original video, as well as the explorer's curiosity, he decided to pay a follow-up visit to the haunted tunnel. It was observed that the water is still flowing like it did the previous time. And as he enters the tunnel, he sees the same yellow ventilation tubing and the rusted, corroded webbing holding back rocks, which looks like it could collapse at any moment. I don't know why that one chain is swinging back there. Don't know if you can see that in the video or not. Yeah, this mine definitely has a very spooky vibe to it. So I'm gonna head back out and check out the other stuff that's here. This is just too wet, and too muddy. Um, and obviously something is making the chains uh, swing. So 
Time to get the hell out of here. He went further, but the mist inside the tunnel appears to get thicker as he moves, and the sound of water flowing is really audible. As it turns out, the water is flowing down through the ore pass that connects Horton Mine to the Victorine Mine, located just above it. It was dug in the uh, late 1970s or early 80s, and it was used as a conveyor tunnel to get the ore out from the Victorine Mine. It's about 900 feet higher on the mountain. And when I was up there at the Victorine Mine um, a year ago, I noticed that uh, there was a, outside the mine was a, a borehole that they had drilled, and I believe that is the ore pass that uh, connects up with this tunnel. They, 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 they dug that ore pass so they could dump the ore down it and then have it trammed out this tunnel out there to the outside. So this tunnel was simply a transport tunnel, and I heard it goes back 600 feet. And if I make it all the way to the back, we should be able to see the uh, shaft coming down from above. That's about a 900 foot shaft um, going up to the surface at the Victorine mine. Okay, the tunnel continues forward there. And I've reached the first little alcove here off to the left, right here, a little dugout area. And you can hear down there what sounds like a lot of water dropping or falling into the tunnel. Don't know if the video is picking that up or not. Okay, right here in the tunnel, the water's a little bit deeper, and uh, it seems like underneath the surface there's a, a hard substance. It must be some sort of mineral buildup. You can sort of see it there around that rock. It's like a, um, a mineral kind of a buildup, and um, that just continues. And the water is flowing. I can see it right there. So it's not stagnant water, which can be a problem in abandoned mines if it's stagnant. And otherwise goes smoothly until he hears something that again causes him to turn around and leave the mine as quickly as he could. This time, he vowed to never return to the haunted tunnel. And I'm not going to climb up these ladders and check all that out. It's too wet, too rusted. And 